Well, hello everyone. This is Jam with Cam, and thank you for jamming with me. I appreciate you guys coming out and watching my video. This is my first video, so I'm sorry for the terrible quality. I have just now realized how much work and effort it truly takes to make such a good video, and I don't know if this is one. <laughs> anyway, so today we are going to tr beat Pokemon Kaizo with hardcore num Nuzlocke rules, or at least the lead four, and it's more theory crafting on how to do it rather than actually doing it, because I have not actually do it, and mad respect to those who have. Many say that this is unbeatable, um, the Elite Four with Hardcore Nuzlocke rules. However, today we're going to disprove that, that it's theoretically possible. Um, and most notably, I know like Mr. Ding Dong Games and several other people have stated that, that uh, it's not Nuzlocke-able, but it actually is. It's just very hard and a little <laughs> inconsistent. So let's take a look at the team. Um, starting off, we got Salamance. Oops, misclick. And we have Salamance, which is a modest nature that we caught in Mirage Tower on the fourth floor, the last floor, with the fossils. And uh, this is a counter that anybody could get as long as you're using a repel to get to that fourth floor and then you search for it. Um, it's uh, Modest is a terrible nature for it, but um, yeah. Uh, then we have our Lonely Ludicolo, which is up attack, and I can't remember what it's down, but it's not a good nature for it too, but still just to kind of show that this is possible. Then we have our Corky Molotic, which is actually, it has pretty decent IVs and it. it's not a terrible nature either. Then we have our Jolly Cast Form, and we got that. Uh, I originally had my uh, a terrible natured uh, Cast Form that just barely didn't have enough speed. Um, cast Form, you have to be a certain speed. It's around 215, at least 216. I'm not sure if 215 work. I haven't tried it yet, but um, you'll have to see. Then we have our Jolly Wobbuffet. Um, our, it's uh, Jolly is an okay nature for, actually it's a terrible nature, excuse me, because it's uh, minus defense up speed and speed for Wobbuffet's useless since we're going to be using counter and mirror coat, which makes us go second. But then we have the Adamant Duskull, which is um, perfect for it, which is, in my opinion, probably the best uh, nature you could get for Ghost Skull, unless you could get like a negative speed up attack or something similar. Um, Duskull needs that big attack. I, I ha didn't get to try any other natures with Duskull, but it would have been kind of cool. And I can't really speak for its IVs. I didn't get to look at IVs much. But uh, yeah, he's, he's pretty much the hero of the run, especially with that Snatter Sneak. Um, again, you can catch all these Pokemon um, in every Nuzlocke you do. You just have to be careful. I got mine in, um, in the Cave of Origins, which is on the uh, third floor where the, you first see the mist. You can also get the Wobbuffet as an egg. That's an automatic guarantee. Um, and then uh, again back to the cast form. Uh, I got mine in Sky Pillar because my other one was um, not a good nature. Regarding the Molotic, uh, the Molotic can be caught in uh, Shoot Meteor Falls in the little place where Bad Gun is famously known for. but. Uh, you used, an, I believe it's an old rod, and it's a 100% as long as you repel till there and you delay the encounter. Ludicolo special, it's uh, in the Savari zone. You have to use Poke Blocks, and it can flee, but if you look up under that, it's a pretty good chance. I recommend you might want to practice practice on it before you um, go in on it, if you allow that in your Nuzlocke rules. Um, but yeah, so that's the team. Um, and I guess we'll get into it. Alright, so here we go. So first up is Sydney. So how we beat Sydney is, in his first Pokemon, is we do rotations. Um, so first off, we're going to send out our Salamance. Then we send in our Melodic, who takes the HP rock like a champ. Then we go into cast form, who is not affected by Shatter Ball. And we basically repeat that until Salamance is usually around 220 HP. And Melodic, we heal up every so often. I'll let you determine when to do that. But uh, for this run, we got very unfortunate in that Salamance took an early critical hit, which means we have to attack with Melodic sooner than I would generally like. Um, 
we attack until uh, Melodic does get that defense drop. So then we go into cast form and then back into Salamance. Generally I want to keep Salamance at 200, 220. Uh, just because he has to generally take up the Machamp. Um, we want also our Melodic to be at like around 270 HP. So that it is able to take out the Houndoom. One thing to note is that my uh, Melodic... Uh, it's not strong enough to take it out on its own, and it does need the Mystic Water. Then we can go into our Wobbuffet. Our Wobbuffet will then use Mirror Coat. If it takes a critical hit, then we lose and the run is over, so that's very important we don't take a critical. It'll knock out the Jolteon, and then we go, he sends out Machamp, which we send our Salamence in. It should have enough health that it's able to fly and severely damage the Machamp. And then we use Earthquake to take it out. Um, then he sends out Tauros, in which case we pee, pee stall, which it takes forever to do, but it's the only efficient and safe way to do it. The, um, we switch to cast form on the HP Ghosts, and then we switch back to Duck Sclops on the normal attacks, typically double edge. And we do that for what seems like forever. Um, if you would like to skip all that, you can go, it's around uh, 4.30ish, I think 4.35 for when we finally something different happens and uh, Salamance starts, is, is able to take the Earthquakes then, and then our Dusclops can take the Quick Attacks until we want to send something else in to take it out. Um, interestingly to note, for this run I did not get to see or try out any other Dusclops. Um, I'd like to see how non-adamant Dusclops would uh, turn out because, uh, at, in my opinion, having an adamant nature Dusclops is probably one of the best Dusclops you can ever have. Uh, it'd also be kind of cool to see, you know, how the IVs affect this situation, but ultimately this is how I found how to beat it. Um, credit goes to uh, Decapod, who I think found it at first, but I don't think there's a really good YouTube video out here kind of explaining it and showing it to everybody. Um, I should note that I still, I have not tried to do this on Hardcore Nuzlocke rules. I'm just showing, I'd like to show that it can be done. Uh, props to the people who are doing it, such as Mr. Ding Dong Games and everybody else. It is a very hard game. Um, even doing this, uh, the Elite Four on Nuzlocke rules is not a guarantee by any means. Uh, ideally you would be able to get a move around or play around to the critical hits, but for this Elite Four attempt, there's a lot of places where you just couldn't play around and you're at the mercy of RNG, which is never a good thing. Um, yeah, we still got like another 30 minutes of us going back and forth. Um, the cast form is one of the only ones, as I mentioned earlier, that I did have to get elsewhere. It uh, just has to be fast enough to take out um, the Salamancer for later on, as we'll see, uh, to take out Drake's Salamance. And if it's not fast enough, or it doesn't have the right IV or nature, then it might be a reset for you. Unless maybe you might be able to take it out with like a Slug King or something else. Um, but uh, here we go, we're about to see Earthquake. Ideally, um, you'll be counting the earthquakes and the double edges so that you'll know when to switch in Salamance, but for me, uh, my Salamance was so low I didn't want to risk it, and I also was going so fast I didn't count it, but ideally you're going to be counting and timing it much better than I did. Um, so now we switch uh, Dusclops and Salamance to lower the attack of the Tauros. Um, until we can send something else in. You could send cast form in, but I recommend doing Ludicolo because it does have that recovery option. Um, for this run, ideally you're not going to get see a lot of critical hits or as many as I did because again, that does bypass the attack lowering that you've uh, we're doing this past two minutes. And I think we should almost be there. Um, I have done it with cast form before and I have done, um, I even did it with Wobbuffet one time. <laughs> I had to use counter on it. It was, it was a bad day. We had, we had hit it several critical hits elsewhere, but, um, yeah. 
would also be interesting to see how a different natured salamance would fare. Um, him being, I think it's mild or having a lowered attack, but higher special attack is very interesting. Um, there's the second critical hit on Ludicolo, which is crazy, so I can attack that Alakazam, even though I would really want to use Surf. Um, I did do a misplay here. I decided to try and throw in Melodic in here, which thankfully it didn't die to a critical hit, but um, Dusclops could also die to a critical hit, so I was very fortunate. Um, Melodic has a very high defense, so um, so a critical hit here on Dusclops or a defense, special defense drop would have been the end of it because Shadow Sneak does not kill. And um, that's Sydney. And now on to Phoebe. So Phoebe, I like to play very aggressive. Um, you can either Shadow Sneak or Shadow Ball. Um, it, I've never seen it go for the first turn Destiny Bond, so Shadow Ball is usually pretty safe. But I know other people who like to sh sh Shadow Sneak. I then go for the Dest or Shadow Ball on Dusclops for two Shadow Balls. Uh, even though there is a chance it could have missed. I like to play very aggressive there. Um, that way I'm not having a PP pee, -pee stall and uh, the Dusclops as well as the Sableye, which now we're going to um, PP pee -pee stall the Sableye. Um, for the next three minutes we are going to PP pee -pee stall, which is going to feel like forever and I'm going to have to try and talk during then, but um, basically all you do is you switch the Dusclops and the Cast Swarm back and forth, basically the same thing we did with the last Sableye. Um, we will throw in the Salamance a couple times to lower the attack, especially while it's still uh, double teaming. I also um, went for the Toxic. Uh, I put Toxic on Cast Swarm, but I think you can probably put it on anybody. Um, Toxic is essential so it doesn't just take forever. Alternatively, if you miss all the Toxics on the double teams, you can throw Melodic out, out there and use Recover and spam enough Recovers that you'll get there. Um, if you miss all your Toxics and you have to PP stall the Dusclops and the Sableye, you might um, be very careful of how you use your Recovery on your Melodic um, since you'll be having to stall that as well. Yeah, I think they definitely buffed Sableye and Dusclops probably a little too much, but I mean, all in all, this is a very great mod, a very hard mod, um, very renowned. Um, so yeah, we just keep going back and forth between the two. Uh, I'm not sure how many PP the Sableye has, or, um, and I'm not counting either, which Hopefully, and ideally, in your Nuzlocke, you'll be counting the PP in, in here so that you'll know when to um, throw out your Melodic. So, because um, if it does start using Struggle, again, the best strategy is to put my Melodic out there so that it can just recover all that. And uh, Struggle will give you a free recover, whereas some other of the Pokemon might one hit KO you instead. Alright, we're almost there. Just a little bit more. Thankfully this is going to be the last PP stall that we have to do um, for the rest of the uh, rest of the Elite Four or this attempt at Elite Four which is I'm very thankful for. Um, so now we finally are going to start seeing the Recover, and then I go for Toxic, I thankfully hit the Toxic, and then we go back and forth there. So usually I would finish off the Sableye with the Melodic out, and then... Uh, I'd finish it with pretty good HP, and um, Phoebe would send out her Gardevoir next. Um, the Gardevoir will almost always Thunder Wave. I've seen it do Thunderbolt, but that's typically when 
it sees a kill on my melodic. Um, but that's not always the case. The, the, the AI is seemingly very random in my opinion. So there's the Gardevoir. I think about mirror coding it, which that's also a viable option. But I like to save my melodic for the Crobat just in case. And I like to send out Wobbuffet because Stab Psychic doesn't affect it as much. So I, ideally I like to put a Citrus Berry, or a, yeah, a Citrus Berry instead of a uh, Chesto Berry because generally it goes for the Double Thunder Wave. And I like that extra help. So he sends out his Ludicolo, in which case I send out mine to do a little bit of chip damage. And then I go into Salamance, which is super safe. Um, either Grass Whistles or Giga Drains, in which case, either way, I fly. And because of my Chesto, I'm able to wake up early and always kill it. I've never seen it not kill it, but um, Phoebe sends out her Crobat, um, in which case, ultimately, I want to lower the Crobat's attack. It's got a pretty decent attack with Air Slash, and it's got some great speed. So I'll kind of do a, a switch strat uh, with my Salamance and my Duskull. Uh, honestly, I really don't really care if my Salamance is asleep, although I prefer not to because generally I'm going to switch it back and forth. Um, I might have been dead to crit here, probably dead to crit here, and probably a little risky to play that. My dust squats in there, but I uh, went ahead and did it to go for that lower of the attack. And then here is where I bring out my Melodic. Um, I didn't have the best uh, plays on it. I don't think I put my chest on it, but I can't remember what I did. Anyway, it takes me forever to get a, a wake up and then I go for recover. And there's a misplay right there. I should have gone for Ice Beam. And then it gets a bunch of enough flinches. I wake up actually pretty quick, quick, but I get a flinch and I'm back asleep. So that's terrible luck, but ultimately I'll take the win, which is coming up. Spoiler alert. So there I go for the recover and get a good, lot of good damage. Finally get my first Ice Beam off on him. And then I go for recover again. Thankfully he misses hypnosis. And then I go for Ice Beam and thankfully it doesn't flinch again. And that is Phoebe. Bunch of fun. So Glacia is up next. And she is probably my least favorite by far. Um, I send out my cast form. Um, I go for Weather Ball. My cast form is actually extremely fast. And it's not always that cast, your cast form will outspeed the Glacia. I've seen the Glacia use anything. So she can explode on my cast form and that will kill it and that will end the run. Um, so generally she, she'll send out her Red Ice, which I should send out my Wobbuffet. I recommend you send out yours um, with a uh, Aspire Berry or one that prevents freezing, but I didn't do that. I send out my Salamence, which it's not as smart. Um, so anyway, you want to mirror coat it and that will kill the Red Ice. Then you want to go into your Melodic. I think that's what I did. Um, if I didn't, you should. You want to have an Aspire Berry on that too. I'm not sure if I do to prevent freezing. Um, from here, I like to keep my Melodic very healthy just in case something bad happens. So I typically um, would recover. Actually, I might just mirror coat. But uh, it's up to you. You know, you want to mirror coat that hidden power and then I like to stay above 200, but I can't remember. So sometimes she'll draw one for seemingly no apparent reason. Um, it's really crazy what she'll use, in my opinion. There might be something in the AI, some computer programmer could tell me about it, but um, honestly, I really don't know what she does or how she picks her moves. I, I, most of them can be predicted, but not all of them. Um, so from here, I would like to go to Ludicolo. I think I did. Um, Ludicolo should have... Wait, no, excuse me. I go into Dusclops because Dusclops procs Thunder. And then now she wants... Dusclops props Hydro Pump. Th Melodic props Thunder. So she thunders the Dusclops and then she wants to Hydro Pump the Dusclops now that he's in. In which case I send out my Ludicolo, which it's 410 resisted. Um, which is needed because Hydro Pump is so boosted in the rain. So I Giga Drain it to death. 
Uh, you want to have an ice berry or something to prevent uh, freezing. Sometimes the whaler will go for amnesia, other times it'll go for explosion. Uh, it's really just a lottery in my opinion, but if you can get to the Swampert, you get a drain and you win, which is the best feeling once you get there. But that Waylord is kind of like the lottery. But again, that is Glacia. She's not fun. Drake is actually pretty consistent, but there is a couple things you got to dodge, like a crit right here on Wobbuffet. If a, a crit will knock you out, um, but uh, here. So and at this point, I, I sack my Salamance. Um, and I say sack, sometimes if you have a really good Salamance, you could knock it out, uh, knock out Tyranitar, but um, mine's not super good. And sometimes Tyranitar doesn't even do Ancient Power, in which case uh, you don't have to sack. But it, my, Tyranitar did do Ancient Power here, and my uh, Brick Break was not a one kick KO. You know, it's four times super effective, but it's kind of tragic. So anyway, I send out the Ludicolo, which is able to surf. If it gets the Omni Boost, I would probably go cast form, but uh, cast form here, this is where you need the speed because it's able to outspeed that Salamance and one hit KO almost all the time. And I've never seen it not one hit KO, but I have seen it not outspeed and that, and then it just dies, which is the worst. My first uh, cast form was like 214 speed, which was just below his with badge boost. But um, anyway, you want to kind of recover. A smart move might would be to Ice Beam at some point with the Melodic on the Kingdra. But you just want to keep recovering that damage um, so that it can come be fairly healthy, healthy when Dragonite comes out. Ideally, I'd like to be right about where I am. Um, sometimes it will use um, a Dra Draco Meteor even when it would know it kills itself. And then you're kind of just really low on HP for Dragonite. It's not a good spot to be. Um, so here, this is the worst case. I get a crit on Dragonite here, which is absolutely awful. Generally, you want to go into Dusclops and then use Shadow Sneak because it'll use Dragon Dance again. But it'll almost, it always uses Extreme Speed when it's on that sliver of health. And if you ever try this, you'll see what I mean. But um, luckily, I'm able to Shadow Ball and then I'm able to Shadow Sneak it. But uh, it, Drake is a tough fight if you don't know what you're doing. Um, very tough, but and if you get unlucky or you get a crit, it just basically ends the run. So it's tough. So here I'm down one Pokemon. I send out my Ludicolo. I'm down my Salamance. Um, I go for Surf. Sometimes it can, as long as I can get a little damage, then we're fine. I can, because then I can send out Cast Form. Cast Form and Flamethrower usually kills it, but. Not always, and in this case, I completely forgot. Yeah, I guess my cast form died too, but still not in a bad place. But it is uh, very possible that I could lose. So then I send out my Dusclops. I go for Shadow Ball. So a crit on here or a special defense drop could cause me to lose it. Um, at this point, I'm not sure what to do, and I go for Shadow Sneak. Luckily, it goes for Sidekick and doesn't kill me. If it had gone for Shadow Ball, I think I lose. So out comes Deoxys, and it's such a glass canyon one shadow sneak will do it. Um, you can kill the Starmie with one Shadow Ball with your Dusclops, at least mine. But uh, you have to be about 100 HP, which often does happen because I generally have cast form and other stuff. You can uh, Mirror Coat, or you can also uh, use cast form Flamethrower, which does great damage. But ultimately you want to just really save your Wobbuffet for this Aerodactyl that is um, just a beast, it's so fast. And so, um, anyway, I go for a counter. So I ended up redoing the fight a couple times. That's why you see this weird wonky camera work in a bit. But ultimately, this fight's actually fairly safe, even with one, without one Pokemon without Salamance. Yeah, so that's the Link 4. That's the best strategy that I could figure out. Again, all those Pokemon you're going to get, you have the option to get, at least in every single Nuzlocke with maybe possible exception of Ludicolo, which Ludicolo, again, you can not all, you can get at the Savari Zone, which I, that's where I got mine, and you have to do some special Poke Block, or if you don't get that or it flees, you can also usually get it in Susipul, Susipul, excuse me, which um, 
You also have a chance to catch Heracross there, but um, you have a good, really high chance to get either a low tad lombre or Ludicola there so yeah so that's the video thank you guys again so much for um, viewing this video I appreciate all your support and all your help uh, I hope you enjoyed the video I hope it was informative um, if you have any comments questions or concerns um, please let me know um, also big uh, props to all you guys who are running it and trying it um, I've, re I've learned a lot about this video. This is my first and it's a lot of work so uh, props to everyone who makes YouTube videos and who puts in the time and effort into those. Um, thank you guys again and I think that's it. I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye.